News app. Cardinal George Pell dies at the age of 81, sparking debate over the legacy of the most powerful Catholic Australia has ever produced. Cardinal is, I think, being one of the great uh, churchmen of Australia and internationally. It is a difficult day for many people who have suffered from childhood sexual abuse. Essential supplies arrive to restock depleted shelves as floodwaters recede in the Kimberley. Brent price rises finally slowing in most regions, but not before a record surge last year. And Australian Kate Blanchett beats some of the titans of the industry, winning Best Actress at the Golden Globes. Hello and welcome to ABC News, I'm Meredith Sheehan. Cardinal George Pell, Australia's highest ranking Catholic official, has died in Rome at the age of 81. From a humble upbringing in country Victoria, Cardinal Pell rose to the upper echelons of the Vatican. But his legacy at home is complex. The most powerful and important Catholic figure Australia has ever produced, George Pell was charged and jailed for child sexual abuse, a conviction later overturned by the High Court. Kathleen Calderwood looks back on his life. Only days ago, George Pell had been one of the most high-profile mourners as Pope Benedict lay in state. But now the faithful are paying their tributes to Cardinal Pell. He was a lion. Uh, that meant he was powerful. He was sometimes loud. Uh, he had a huge heart. The news of his death due to heart complications following hip surgery has come as a shock to many. For uh, many uh, people, particularly of the Catholic faith, this will be a difficult day. George Pell was appointed to run the Vatican's finances in 2014, making him third in the church's hierarchy. Yet the most searing image of the Cardinal was his appearance before the Victorian courts on charges of child abuse. Crimes he maintained he never committed. What a load of absolute and disgraceful rubbish. In December 2018, the Cardinal became the highest ranking Catholic official to be convicted of child abuse after a jury found him guilty of abusing two choir boys during the 1990s when he was the Archbishop of Melbourne. He would later describe what he felt as the jury handed down its decision. I was too busy keeping control of myself. It was a blow and uh, uh, I just had to put up with it. Cardinal Pell spent more than 400 days behind bars before his convictions were overturned in the High Court. The judges stating it was possible an innocent man had been jailed. The son of a Ballarat publican, George Pell, excelled at school and on the sports field. As a priest, then the Archbishop of Melbourne and later Sydney, he rankled progressive Catholics with his conservative message. Now we're not a bit anti-women, but we're not in favour of women priests. He refused communion to gay activists, but was an advocate for Indigenous reconciliation and a fierce critic of the mandatory detention of asylum seekers. I think it's uh, mean and excessive, excessively harsh. <laughs> Cardinal Pell had lobbied for Sydney to host World Youth Day in 2008. Pope Benedict's visit drew a crowd of one million. A wonderful moment of uh, recollection and, uh, and adoration and prayer. His past decisions came to haunt him, such as accompanying one of Australia's worst pedophiles, priest Gerald Ridsdale, to a court in 1993. And what Cardinal Pell knew about abuse in the church dominated his evidence before the 2016 Royal Commission. It's a sad story and it wasn't of much interest to me. He defended the church's handling of abuse cases and was the architect of the controversial compensation scheme, the Melbourne Response. The taking of steps to uh, address that was important at that time. Now we have different processes. There will be a requiem service in the Vatican for Cardinal Pell before his body is brought back to Australia. A funeral will be held and he'll be buried at Sydney St Mary's Cathedral. 
For decades in the church, both in Australia and the Vatican, George Pell became a powerful and polarising figure. His death has prompted an outpouring of sorrow from supporters and condemnation from survivors of clerical abuse. Mary Guerin reports on the divided reactions to George Pell's passing. Bells pealed out across Melbourne and Sydney on what is a day for some of mourning, for some of deep pain. A lot of survivors of child sexual abuse have post-traumatic stress disorder and so this kind of unexpected news or seeing things you know, in the media can be very triggering. Services in both cities remembered their former archbishop who ascended to the most senior ranks of the church. One of the significant things that George Pell did was to place Australia on the map of the Catholic Church and inside the Vatican. Well, I feel pretty devastated, to be honest. Uh, he was a, a really good man. I remember him with great affection as a great man and spiritual leader of the church. But, as in life, in death, George Pell divides opinion. The disappointment is that the institution of the church, as reflected through the senior archbishops, Cardinal Pell included, was a church that increasingly was out of touch. On the world stage, Vatican watchers say Pell's campaign to overhaul the Holy See Treasury will endure. The plays which he called are still sort of being uh, unfolding on the field. And so he was extremely influential in the Pope's agenda of financial reform. <laughs> But back home, it's his track record on dealing with clerical abuse that's in the spotlight, especially among survivors. I'm not shedding a tear at all. He could have done some good and tried to right some wrongs, but instead he just offended the brand. Some defend Pell's efforts in the 90s to address child sexual abuse claims. Certainly he was the first church leader in Australia to actually do something positive and concrete. Uh, the Melbourne response should be remembered as a disaster it was. I mean, that was a way of trying to minimise compensation payments. And Pell's reputation was hit by the damning Royal Commission finding that he not only knew by the early 70s of clerical abuse, but considered ways to avoid gossip about it. I wish he'd stayed alive for another 10 years so he could have suffered public opprobrium. Even after his criminal conviction was overturned, Pell was still facing a civil claim from the father of one of the former choir boys he'd been accused of abusing. The claim will continue against the church and against any estate um, that George Pell uh, may have left behind. The best that survivors can hope for now is that his passing opens the path perhaps for the church to take a, a more modern approach. As congregations and the community absorb Pell's death, the path ahead is rocky for those still dogged by the shadows in the church's history. And if this coverage has raised any issues for you, you can contact...